Hey everybody, it is Zach here from the Ed Boys, and welcome to my 1 to 99 fishing guide. In this guide, I'm going to go over all the things I believe that you need to know about leveling up your fishing in OSRS. I'll start with fishing tools and other bonuses that you can get for your fishing gains. Then we're going to talk about the quests that you can do to get some starting fishing XP. I will then go over the route that I would take for 1 to 99 fishing before going over a few alternative methods as well, since there are a lot of different methods for fishing gains. If you've been enjoying the videos or just getting some useful information out of them, be sure to like and subscribe for more content. Content. You do need a tool to catch fish depending on what you're catching, like a small fishing net for shrimps, a lobster pot for lobsters, or the harpoon for tuna, swordfish, and sharks. Most of these basic tools can be purchased from a fishing shop in the game, like the one in Catherby or the one in Port Sarum, but also most of these tools are tradable, so you could just purchase them on the Grain Exchange if you are a main. There are a couple interesting options for harpoons outside of the regular one. You do have the barbed tail harpoon, which is the same as a standard one, but you can wield it, which saves an inventory space. The dragon harpoon does require 61 fishing to use and 60 attack to wield. You don't have to wield it to be able to use it from your inventory, though obviously it'll save that envy space if you can wield it. The dragon harpoon gives a 20% catch rate over a regular harpoon, and if you can wield it, you can use the special attack to temporarily give a plus three fishing boost. There is also a crystal harpoon, which is an upgrade from the dragon harpoon harpoon, giving a 35% boost to your catch rate rather than the 20%. It does require completing Song of the Elves and using the Crystal Tool Seed to make that harpoon, and then you also have to charge it with Crystal Shards to keep it going, so it's really not worth it unless you have a lot of spare money lying around. The Fishing Barrel is a reward you can get from the Temporos Encounter. You can fill up the barrel with up to 28 raw fish, and then you can only empty that at a bank or a deposit box. This is very helpful for any fish that you're catching that you're trying to bank, doubling the amount of catches before you have to take a bank trip. The Tackle Box is a Another reward from the Temporos, it holds all of your fishing tools for you and other various fishing items, but you can't use the items while they're in the box, so this is only useful for saving bank space. The angler's outfit can be obtained from the fishing trawler or from aerial fishing. While wearing the full outfit, you get 2.5% bonus XP while fishing. It is nice to get a little bonus XP, but it is a very small amount. Personally, I wouldn't mind if they boosted the outfits for a little bit more XP. And then finally, we have the Rada's Blessing. This is a reward from the Core End slash Kavos Diaries. Wearing the Blessing while fishing gives a 2% chance to catch an extra fish, and that's 2% per tier. So you get up to an 8% chance with the Elite Diaries completed, and it's only bonus fish, no extra XP from that bonus catch. Before you start fishing, it is a good idea to send a couple of quests to get some starting XP, skipping past those early levels. The Sea Slug quest requires 30 fire making to complete, and it is very short, and you're going to get over 7k fishing XP, which would jump you from 1% to 24 fishing. You could then also send the fishing contest for another 2.4k XP. It's a very short quest and it's going to jump you from 24 to 26 fishing. Uh, Taibu Wanai Trio can get another 5k fishing XP from there and it does have pretty low requirements, but if you get at least the 20 plus fishing from quests, then you've already skipped those first section of levels, so that's not a bad start. I have linked to the wiki's full list of quest XP rewards in the description. If you didn't want to send any quests, you can start at level 1 by fishing shrimps with a small fishing net. Uh, I like to do this in the Draenor village, but there is a spot in the Lumbridge Swamp that's easy to get to very early in your account progress. At level 15, you will automatically start catching anchovies as well, which is some bonus XP, and you can just drop the shrimp or anchovies that you're catching since they're so cheap. There's no need to bank them. Levels 20 to 47, I would go for fly fishing, which does require a fly fishing rod and a bunch of feathers. You use one feather every catch. 1500 should be enough to get through these levels, but in the long run, you might use a lot more feathers during your fishing gains. I am fly fishing at the Barbarian village, but there is a nice spot in Lumbridge as well as the Shiloh village. Fly fishing can be very quick XP an hour once you get to high levels, but for this guide, you're moving on at level 47, so you won't quite get to those quick XP rates, though level 47 isn't that much XP overall. I do suggest just dropping the trout and salmon as they are fairly cheap. You could bank them if you had zero cash and you needed some starting GP, but honestly, if you're that low on GP, I highly suggest out that you check out my blast furnace guide. At the Barbarian village spot, you could cook the fish on the fire over here. If you're really interested in getting some cooking XP at these low levels as well, then I do suggest switching to Temporos at level 35 fishing, but we'll be talking more about that in a little bit. 47 to 58 fishing, I would look into drift net fishing, which also does require 44 hunter. You can drift net fish on Fossil Island, so you will have to complete the Bone Voyage quest. It is located in the underwater area, which you get to by using the rowboat in the northeast side of the island out to sea, and then right click on this rowboat and dive. I suggest getting a diving apparatus as well as a fishbowl helmet to breathe underwater. You could try to use puffer fish to keep your oxygen level up, but it's really not efficient to do it that way. To get into the drift net fishing area, you will have to pay this mermaid 200 numbers and then you'll have access for the rest of the day. You can pay 20,000 Numelite for permanent access, but that's really not needed unless you're doing a ton of drift net fishing. 
You also need to bring your own drift nets for this method. You can use like 100 plus nets per hour when you're really cruising, so you're gonna need a lot of them over time. You can bring noted drift nets to this mermaid Annette and she will store them for you. You can then take them back out noted or unnoted so you don't have to go to the bank for more fishing nets at all. Uh, to set up the drift net, you just click on the anchor point with a drift net in your inventory. There are two different spots that you can set up nets in here. You can just leave the nets to passively catch fish. Once 10 fish shoals are in the drift net, it'll be full and you can harvest it for a variety of fish. The higher your fishing level, the better fish that you're going to get and the better fishing XP that you'll get. It is very slow to just wait on the fish to get caught though. Clicking on the fish shoals will make them more likely to move towards the net. If you're wielding a merfolk trident, trident of the seas, or dragon harpoon, you are more likely to make the fish go towards that drift net when you click on them. So the merfolk trident is a very nice add-on and I do suggest trying to invest in one. This is very click intensive compared to most fishing methods, which does make it a little bit harder to keep up XP rates. And also you're not really gonna make any money here because drift nets aren't necessarily cheap. If drift net fishing does not interest you, you can just stick to fly fishing for these levels. If you do like this method though, then you should probably think about using it all the way to 99 potentially. At max pace, you get very very good fishing XP rates, as well as even better hunter XP rates, so it is a very efficient skilling method. Finally, for 58 to 99, I would go with the classic Barbarian Fishing. You will need to start Barbarian Training by talking to Otto Godbless, who is located in this hut south of Barbarian Assault, and you can now track your Barbarian Training progress through the quest log. You will find it under the mini quest section. You can start Barbarian Fishing as soon as level 48, but you won't be getting good XP rates if you're only catching the lowest level fish, so both Fly Fishing and Drift Net Fishing are better XP an hour until you hit that 58 Fishing. You also need 15 Strength and 15 Agility to do barbarian fishing. You need a barbarian rod and then a lot of feathers for bait. You can cut up the fish that you catch by using a knife on them, which is gonna give you some cooking XP. And then you can use those cut up fish parts as bait instead of the feathers. Uh, it's a little bit more click intensive doing that rather than just dropping the fish. So that's not a requirement if you're just looking for good fishing XP. You can get 40K to 60K fishing XP an hour here, as well as four to 6K strength and agility XP an hour, which is a pretty nice bonus. It's pretty low intensity, making it easy to keep your XP rates at a high point, but you could also three tick fish to boost up the speed here. I will not be going in depth on three tick fishing in this guide, but if you're interested in a three tick skilling guide, let me know in the comments section below. Barbarian fishing is pretty quick XP for fishing, but it still takes a while to get to 99. So let's go over some of the alternative methods if you're looking for a few different ways to get XP. We'll start with the Temporos. The fishing boss is an engaging way of training fishing other than just catching and dropping or catching and banking. You'll need level 35 fishing to get started at Temporos and you can use it all the way to 99 fishing if you like it. To travel there, you should use this boat located south of the Al Karid bank. He's gonna take you out to the docks where you can do all of your Temporos gains. You are gonna need a hammer, a rope, a harpoon, and a few buckets, all of which can be obtained on the boat when you start the minigame. If you complete the Dream Mentor quest, then you can use the Humidify spell on the Lunar Spellbook, which fills up your water buckets way faster than using the water source in the game. And then also the Infernal Harpoon is very solid here, as it will automatically cook about one third of the fish that you're catching. It normally just destroys the fish that you cook and you don't keep them, but in Temporos with Harpoon Fish, it won't destroy them. It'll just give you the cooked fish, so it's very helpful for speeding up the process. I do have a full Temporos guide linked in the description, but I will briefly go over how to beat the boss right now. First, you do have a few bars up on the top left you have to pay attention to. We have the energy meter at the top. Uh, I usually just think of this as Temporos's shield. When you place a harpoon fish in the cannon, it's gonna fire it at the Temporos, which does damage to the shield. The second bar is Temporos's essence meter, and which is basically Temporos's health. Once you get it down to 0%, that's when you win the encounter. To damage its health, you need to first drop that top bar to zero, which causes Temporos to go underwater. Then you can fish from the pools right next to him for a little bit of time, which will damage his essence meter. And the third bar is Storm Intensity. This is basically a timer. If the intensity hits 100%, you do lose the encounter. The Storm Intensity will reset to zero each time that you drop Temporos down. But after dropping him down three times, when he gets back up that third time, it's gonna fill the bar very quickly, losing the round. You can get him to drop down a fourth time if you already have Harpoon Fish in the cannons when he comes back up. We'll show you that a little more in a minute. Temporos has a couple special attacks. We have the Colossal Wave, which starts to turn your screen blue, signaling that it's about to hit the 
island. You can protect yourself by just clicking on the mast of the ship or one of the totems on the island, and you'll tie yourself to it as long as you have a rope. If you do get hit by the wave, you will lose some of your items and some of your fish. For the second special attack, clouds will roll in, and lightning is going to start a few fires on the island. You can put these fires out by just clicking on them as long as you have a bucket of water. Standing in these fires will take some of your items and your fish, but you won't take any damage. Finally, sometimes the Temporos will send a torrent of water at the cannon that you're firing, which disables the cannon for a few ticks, and it'll knock you back, but you can just step out of the way as this is going to hit the cannon. Pretty easy to dodge. Temporos will not use any of these special attacks if its energy meter is at 10% or less, so the strategy is usually just get to that point where he's not using specs, and then catch as many harpoon fish as you can before you send them down and start the next phase. Let's go over what a full run looks like putting this all together. Start by fishing some harpoon fish. 17 cooked harpoon fish will be needed to get Temporos down to 4%, which will stop him from using specs. Sometimes there's going to be a fishing spot with a harpoon fish jumping out of it, you can see, and that's where you're going to catch double harpoon fish. So always try to fish from that spot when it's there. Cook the fish at the shrine on the island. Usually when you start cooking the fish, around then you'll see the colossal wave, and then a little bit later the clouds are going to roll in, probably right around the time you're running up to the ship. I load 17 fish into the cannon and then go put out a few fires and catch more harpoon fish while we wait for that storm intensity meter to keep going up. I would like to get 19 more cooked harpoon fish, but if I'm not quick enough, I know that I want to run back to the ship when that storm intensity gets from like 90 to 93%. We want the 19 fish this time because we need one more fish to finish the current energy meter. And then it's going to shoot an extra fish and kind of waste that one. And then when the Temporos comes back up, the rest of the 17 fish in there should get him back to the threshold for not using specs. While the Temporos is down, fish a little bit from the pool in front of him to go ahead and do some damage. When he comes back up, we just repeat the process, get his energy down to 10% or under to turn off those specs, catch as many extra harpoon fish as you can, potentially juggling a few on the deck of the ship to get more inventory space, and then knock the Temporos down as the swarm intensity gets to like 90%. For the third phase, after you've gotten the energy back down to the no spec threshold, you can spend some time putting out fires for some bonus points if you would like. The important thing is to remember that the next time you drop him down to fish from that pool, when he comes back up, he's going to rapidly fill up that storm intensity to 100 and you will lose. So you either have to finish off his essence meter and end the encounter before that happens, or if you make sure that you have enough harpoon fish already in the cannons, then they're going to drop him down really quickly while that storm intensity is going up. This will only work if you have fish in multiple cannons, since one cannon's not going to fire fast enough to do that on its own. When the round ends, you will get a couple of reward permits that you can cash in by fishing from this pool out by the bank. Uh, you are going to need a small fishing net to fish the rewards, but you can get one for free from the guy who's sitting right next to the pool. Higher fishing level is going to get you better fish, with 81 fishing being the highest tier drop table. And then there are some cool unique rewards like that fish barrel, the tackle box, and even the tome of water. The XP per hour is not bad, as well as some easy cooking XP thrown in there, so you're training a couple stats at a time. Also, Temporos is just way more engaging than regular fishing methods. If you have any questions or you just want more in-depth information about the Temporos encounter, be sure to check out my full Temporos guide, which is linked in the description. At 43 fishing and 35 hunter, you can start some aerial fishing. This can be done on the island in the center of Lake Mulch, which is located in the Kingdom of Korin. You can get to that island by taking any of the four boats on the outskirts of the lake, a very easy way to do this is using the DJR ferry ring code and then just running over to the boat. You talk to Alry the angler and he's going to get you started on aerial fishing, which really just involves clicking on the fishing spots and having your bird go catch the fish for you. It's a very click intensive method, but it does give fishing and hunter XP. In fact, you get more hunter XP than fishing. You do need some bait, which you can start off with a few king worms on the island. Once you catch a few fish, you can then just use a knife on those fish to get fish chunks, which can be used as bait so you don't have to keep picking up the king worms. And there is a knife spawn in the building on the island. Uh, you will get some mulch pearls as well, which can be spent in Alry's shop. There's a few cool rewards in the shop, but mainly this is an alternate method to getting the angler's outfit if you don't like the fishing trawler, though the fishing trawler will take a lot less time to finish the outfit. Drift net fishing is better for fishing and hunter XP at its fastest pace, so if you like the drift net fishing method, you should stick to that. But if you're interested in getting both the fishing and hunter XP without doing drift nets, then aerial fishing might be the one for you. At 65 fishing, you can catch raw carambuans. You're willing to complete the Tai Buwanai trio quest to catch these fish. During the quest, you should obtain a carambuan vessel, or you could get another from the guy in Tai Buwanai for only two coins. You will need carambuan G as bait to catch the carambuans. These little fish can be caught 
spot with a small fishing net. Uh, there are fishing spots south of the village, very close to the CKR ferry ring. You can catch a lot of Karam 1G very quickly. So like five to 10 minutes of this fishing is gonna give you enough bait for hours of regular Karam 1 fishing. The best way to catch these does require the ferry ring. The code DKP takes you very close to this fishing spot. And then you can just teleport to Xanris with the same ferry ring and bank there. The Karam 1 fishing spot never moves. So it tends to be a very AFK method. Uh, plus, if you're using a fishing barrel for even longer trips, it's really one of the most AFK fishing methods in the game. You can only land 25 to 40k XP an hour overall, so it's not a quick method, but that's usually the case for some more AFK training in general. Also, you get like 250k to 350k worth of fish per hour, so it's a little bit better profit than just like fish and drop. Finally, I want to talk about minnows. These require 82 fishing and you use a small fishing net to catch them. You can catch minnows out on the fishing platform located in the fishing guild. You will need the angler's outfit to access the platform. It does not have to be spirit anglers, just the regular angler's outfit. Talk to Kylie Minnow and the Fishing Guild docks, and she will now take you to the fishing platform whenever you want. She just has to check that you have the, the angler outfit one time. Minnows work a little bit differently than regular fishing spots. You'll catch minnows very rapidly, but also the spots will move every 15 seconds instead of moving randomly. They'll also be moving always in a clockwise direction when they change, so it's not like super AFK, but it's very simple to do. Sometimes you'll see a flying fish jumping out of the spot, which is going to take some of your minnows instead of catching, so you just move to a different spot quickly. Uh, you can trade your minnows to Kylie, and she's going to give you raw sharks at a rate of 40 minnows per shark. You can get up to 500 sharks per hour at high levels, which is actually a pretty solid profit for fishing gains, and the XP per hour is still not too bad. I did a ton of minnow fishing on my hardcore Iron Man to collect sharks early in the account gains, and I was very happy with the results. There's a ton of different fishing methods in the game, each with their own different pros and cons, like infernal eels, sacred eels, even dark crabs are really solid, but all the methods that I've mentioned in this video are the ones that I would use to train my fishing anywhere from levels 1 to 99. If you still have any questions about fishing gains, be sure to let me know in the comments section below, and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you very much for watching, and best of luck on your fishing grinds.